Hey, welcome back. In this video, I want to go over a comprehensive example on finding the eigenvalues and eigenvectors that correspond to those eigenvalues for a two by two matrix. So if you've been watching the other videos that I've been doing on this topic, um, we've been kind of like solving little bits and pieces of this, but this is the first time we're going to go through the whole way, find both eigenvalues, because in this case, there will be two, and then those corresponding eigenvalues. So first of all, we're going to need to know what our matrix is that is called A minus lambda I. And to get this, we literally just take matrix A, which is 4, 8, 6, and 26, and we multiply the product of this value lambda and the identity matrix, so that ends up just being lambdas on the main diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So this can be rewritten as basically just 4 minus lambda, and then this top element is still 8, and then this guy down here is 6, and then this one here, bottom right, is 26 minus lambda. So if we take the determinant of a minus lambda i, then we can write that with our determinant bars here, and it's just 4 minus lambda, 8, and 6, and 26 minus lambda. And in the case of a 2 by 2 matrix, to take the determinant of it, we just take the basically the product of the stuff that's on the main diagonal. So we have 4 minus lambda times 26 minus lambda. And then we subtract the product of the other guys, the other diagonal. So it is minus 8 times 6. And what we do want to do is we want to set this to be equal to 0 because we want to find the roots and those will end up being the eigenvalues. So if we just expand this out, we are going to get lambda 1 is equal to positive 28 and lambda 2 is equal to positive 2. So these are the eigenvalues of matrix A. And if you remember back to the first video that I talked about eigenvalues and eigenvectors, um, for an n by n matrix, in this case it is 2 by 2, we will have exactly n roots. And so that's why we're having two roots over here, because it's a 2 by 2 matrix. All right, so that is the first half of the problem done. We found the eigenvalues. The next thing to do is find an eigenvector that corresponds to each eigenvalue. And the way that we do this is we find the null space of a minus lambda i, but we personalize this, or we kind of specify this for each eigenvalue that we're dealing with. So that we're going to do this once for eigenvalue number one, and we're going to do it again for the second eigenvalue. So we put in a little subscript here, and uh, this becomes that we're going to be dealing with 28 uh, for our value of lambda. And this actually looks very similar to what we did up here where we subtract out lambdas along the main diagonal. We just substitute in the actual value that we have. So we have uh, 4 minus 28, and then 8, and then 6, and then 26 minus 28. And because we're taking the null space of this matrix, basically we want to set it up as an augmented matrix with zeros on the right hand side. And then the set of solutions that satisfy this uh, basically will form the eigenspace. And from there we can get an eigenvector. So if we just actually just perform this first little bit of uh, subtraction that's going on inside the matrix to clean it up, we're going to get negative 24, 8, 6, negative 2, and then this right-hand side stays unaffected. Okay, so we're going to want to try and get this down to reduced row echelon form, and so basically the think what we're going to do is we're going to take row 2, and we're going to add 1 quarter of row 1. And that actually knocks out the entire bottom row to zeros. Uh, the next thing that we can do here is just multiply row 1 by negative 1 over 24. And from here, now we can rewrite this as a system of linear equations, and this is just going to be x1 minus 0 0.333, or even minus a third x2 is all equal to 0. So if we, uh, if we rearrange this, we can write x1 in terms of x2. It's just equal to 1 third x2. And then we can just say that, well, x2 is just equal to itself. Basically, x2 here is the independent variable, and x1 is the dependent. Now, this is the solution to this problem in parametric form, and we can rewrite that as the solution in vector form by just writing what we have for x1 and x2, which are the first and second components. So this is 1 third x2, and then we have x2 in here. So we can close off those brackets, but here what you're seeing is that this is actually just describing a vector 
that the first element is just one third the size of this second element. So really we don't actually need the subscript here anymore, it's kind of irrelevant. And if we wanted to clean this up a little bit more just to get rid of the fraction, we could just multiply both by three where we have uh, the first element is x and then this is 3x. So this is saying exactly the same thing, that the first element is one third the size of the second element. And when we consider all of the vectors that have this form, they make up the eigenspace associated with this eigenvalue u number one, which was 28. And the other thing that we can do here is we can just pull out the x basically. And so we're going to be left with a one three on the inside. This one three on the inside forms the basis for our eigenspace. And it is also one of the eigenvectors that belongs to lambda one. And actually any multiple of one three is an eigenvector that belongs to lambda one. So now what we have to do basically is we have to repeat this process again to find the eigenspace and a basis and then the eigenvector belonging to lambda two. So the way that we do that is we take the null space of a minus lambda two i and in this case lambda two is the value two. That's our second eigenvalue. So when we plug it in just like this uh, example up here, we now have four minus two, eight, six, and 26 minus two. And we're taking the null space, so again, we set the right-hand side of the augmented matrix to zero. And then if we again just take the next step, we simplifying these numbers that we have, we get two, eight, six, and 24. So again, we want to reduce this down to reduced row echelon form if possible. And so to do that, we're going to do row one divided by two and row two divided by six. And then you can see that if we just subtract row one from row two, the whole second row gets knocked out to zeros. And again, very similarly, we can rewrite this as a system of linear equations now, or basically just one linear equation. Um, so we have x1 plus 4x2 is equal to 0. And then again, we can write x1 in terms of x2. So it's going to be equal to negative 4x2. And then we're going to say that x2 is in fact the independent variable. So it's just equal to itself. And then again, we're going to convert from, just like we did before, parametric form to the vector form of the solution, which is negative 4 x2 and then x2 and we can just drop the subscript for the exact same reason because all we need to say is that the first element is negative four times greater than the second element and now every vector that has this form will make up the eigenspace belonging to lambda 2 and again all we have to do is just pull out that x to get a basis which is negative 4 1 um, and this basis is one of the eigenvectors that belongs to lambda 2 and actually any multiple of negative four one is an eigenvector that belongs to lambda two. But typically the questions are just asking you to find the two exact eigenvalues, and then usually just an eigenvector that corresponds to the first eigenvalue, and then an eigenvector that corresponds to the second eigenvalue. And there you go, that is the comprehensive example for a two by two matrix. And join me in the next video where we will do the same thing, but for a three by three matrix.